Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully, there's some uh, people joining today. Hopefully, we get uh, uh, some interaction. The uh, the graphic I produced behind me was kind of uh, an inspiration a couple of days ago. So my wife thinks I'm corny, but uh, anyway, my name's Todd Rains. I'm from uh, Wood Turning Tools. Start wrong side. There we go. And uh, I'm here in Allen, Texas, and uh, do this live stream every couple of weeks, uh, every two weeks on Fridays at 2.30 Central Time. Uh, so thanks for joining me in my shop here today. And uh, uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get some inspiration today uh, and maybe some thoughts on design and form and stuff like that. So that's what it's all about. Uh, Lost art. I get the wrong side. So Raiders of the Lost Art. So it's a, uh, it's an interesting topic. I'm sure we all have that box in the corner of the, the shop or multiple boxes in, in my case of turnings and things that just never got completed because something went wrong. So that's the idea today. I spent a little time on the artwork here and uh, had fun with it. So um, hopefully you get something out of this. The reason, uh, one of the reasons why today is I, I'm down a camera. Um, and so we've only got two camera shots here. And so I am, uh, I thought this would be a good, uh, good subject to talk about with, you know, less camera work needed and stuff. So, uh, let's see, we've got people joining in here. Let me say hi. Uh, hi, Cindy. Good to have you here. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, I'll, uh, catch you up in email here, uh, after this. Uh, good to have you here. Thank you. And she says hi to Shelly. Uh, Scott, good to have you here. Scott Hampton from Hampton Wood Turnings. Good to have you here. And uh, David, uh, hi, Todd, Shelly, Cindy, Scott, everyone else from Oregon. Rainy Oregon. Yeah, we're, we had a cold spell down here. We got down to 34 overnight the other night. It was crazy. I don't know what's going on. We had a big front come in, but it's up to like 89 already here. Um, Philip, good to have you here. Thank you for joining from across the pond. Have a good evening. Have a uh, nice Friday evening here with us. Let's see. Who's this? Uh, oh, so she's saying hi. So, um, uh, and, uh, Scott says it's raining here in central California. Well, that's good. I'm glad, uh, glad people get in rain if they want it or need it. Lowell, good to have you here from, uh, down South Texas way. David Drickhammer. Thank you very much. Uh, Tim Tucker. Uh, good to have you here. Is that North Carolina fella, I believe. And uh, Lee from Birmingham, Alabama. Good to have you all here. So thanks very much, folks. I appreciate you joining in. And uh, yeah, so a um, couple of things, uh, just housekeeping-wise. Um, I'm I'm using Streamyard. It's a it's a web-based uh, sort of live streaming platform. They changed their, or actually, I think it was Facebook that changed things. Um, so if you're watching on Facebook, like Tim Tucker and Lowell and stuff. Um, tell me if it was easy enough to find the the thing, the live stream, because uh, Facebook is now taking these posts and making them events uh, versus just a post with the live stream. I don't know technically too much of the difference, but I know from my end, it's maybe a little bit harder to, um, it's easy from setting it up, but trying to share it is a little different. So uh, let me know if you got it okay. And uh um, you know, in the Facebook groups, uh, uh, let me see if, uh, there's only a couple on Facebook, uh, Tim and Lowell. So let me know how that's going for you, how it was easy to sign up. And, uh, I got to figure out a bit more 
uh, a bit more. Uh, Tim says, uh, yes, received a notice from Facebook and clicked. I think clicked. Oh, good. Okay. So good. I, I'm glad there's a notification. So I um, wasn't quite sure how that transpired on the user end. So uh, good, good. Uh, yeah, and clicked on it. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Um, good to know. So uh, there's uh, some other aspects to Facebook and in, in uh, these events that I have to dig into a bit more, but glad that worked and everybody got here okay. Uh, YouTube, of course. Um, uh, let's see, Lowell said, I can't, why is not show? There we go. I clicked on the image at the bottom of your homepage. Um, you mean bottom of the newsletter, maybe, Lowell? Or because the homepage, the, the Facebook button is up in the top corner, kind of right up here. I, I don't have my, my uh, website uh, loaded up here. So, but yeah, get there either way. Just find the, the YouTube channel, Facebook page or profile, and uh, it should be there for you. So um, it's a learning thing with, uh, with the, um, how that works. And so we're looking there. Chuck is here. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks for joining. Chuck is just down in Arlington, I believe. So nice close by. So, uh, no, I saw a screen image of at the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah. Still confused about that. I'll look into that. Maybe we can uh, um, find that offline. Anyway. I'm glad you're all here. That's the important point. Now, there's some, uh, you know, uh, tech stuff on my side to kind of think about. Uh, let's move on. So um, a few things going on today or this week or in the next coming weeks. Let me see if I can find my. Uh, so uh, first of all, this is how y'all know how to get a hold of me. You see this every time I do this, but I keep showing it. Uh, go to woodturningtoolstore.com. Uh, contact me there. Uh, all the contact controls there. Um, I and so this again. So it says coming soon. I should have changed this. I didn't. Uh, we have all the uh, the robust tools in stock, uh, not the lathes, but all the other tools, the uh, chisels and uh, um, gouges, live centers, drive centers. Uh, so check that out. I just sent a, a newsletter out uh, listing all that stuff. So um, take a look. We're excited, and uh, uh, Brent and I are. Uh, Brent's got some new products coming out in a few weeks. So I can't tell you more than that because uh, he'll probably not like me to. So um, Larry is here. Uh, good to have you here, Larry. Thanks for all the help last night. You did a great job, by the way. And uh, so good to have you. Larry is uh, in our local club. We had a club meeting last night and uh, very helpful in uh, setting up the AV stuff. So uh, our friend Lyle Jameson has got a IRD uh, on Tuesday. October 25th. Uh, so this is a part one of two parts. Um, there's my fingers, two parts. Um, I should do it that way for the UK folks. Sorry, Philip. Uh, so um, the uh, first part Tuesday, and then the next part, I think uh, uh, the next Tuesday, November 1st, uh, doing this sort of natural edge holoform. So uh, be sure to check that out. Go to lylejameson.com and um, find your tickets there and uh, enjoy that. So we, we may see you there. Uh, uh, Cindy has got a live stream on Thursday. And so we're always happy to see Cindy. She did a great job with her um, grinding tools uh, last week. So uh, looking forward to not, was it last? Yeah, last week. I was out of town Thursday, so I missed it live, but I watched it back. So uh, it was good to, good, to, good to see that. So let's see. Um, Next, oh, she's got her uh, session number four in this four-session tutorial on lidded vessels, hollow lidded vessels, so or lidded hollow vessels, however you want to say that. So check that out Saturday. I'll be co-hosting as usual on Saturday the 29th. I believe it's at, uh, and Cindy, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, noon central, um, 11 Mountain. I think that's right, yeah. And uh, so go to cindydrosa.com to check that out. And uh, you can get a uh, uh, individual seat or you can buy a seat to all four. You get the playbacks for all four. So um, check that out and check your site out. So that is, I think, it for what I've got to sort of announce. Uh, forgive me, anybody, if I've forgotten something. So um, let's see. What am I doing here? I'm going to go to overhead. 
And we'll look at the overhead. I've got a little of my mouse pad here. I'll move that down. And uh, we've got a nice gray board here, and that's about all we have. What I have off to the side is a bunch of boxes. So I'm going to pull those, uh, you know, I've got a box here, and my intent here is to kind of um, go through uh, some of the turnings I've got, you know, shoved away in a corner uh, from uh, as recently as probably a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, to some stuff over 12 years old or more, I don't know. And just to kind of go through why it's in the box, why I'm dissatisfied with it, why I didn't finish it, uh, what I might do with it next, uh, and that kind of thing. And hopefully it gives you some inspiration um, to, um, uh, to look at your own stuff and see what, what you might make of stuff that's in the corner, uh, stuff that's collecting dust. If you see something that you want to ask more about, let me know in the comments um, and we can talk about it in more detail. I've got a, um, <laughs> a truckload, <laughs> I was about to say another word, but a truckload of stuff here to go through. So I don't know that I'll go through it all, but uh, we will uh, uh, we will certainly take a look. So let me, uh, Cindy's just uh, popped in. So yes, 11 Mountain, noon central. Thank you. Uh, October 20th, I did get it right. So good stuff. Uh, hollow vessel with, with collar. So good, good, to, uh, good to be there. And uh, Tony made it. Hey, Todd, good to see you. Uh, you're all still here. Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> Thank you. You are too, I see. So that's good news. A uh, little inside joke. Um, so yeah, absolutely. So uh, first thing, what do we have? Um, we've got this guy. It's got a little uh, drippage of stain on it that... Uh, I don't know what that came from, but this is a nice, um, it's actually a uh, very nice turning. I, I, I like this one a lot. I don't know why it's in the box really. Um, but it is Bradford pear. It's got a little bit of figure in it, as you can see. Um, it's unfinished. This is, uh, just straight off, uh, well, after sanding straight off the lathe, I haven't put any finish on it. Uh, I'll go overhead and we'll take a look at what it looks like. So it's got a nice, the bottom's not quite, I mean, it feels fairly smooth. It's got a little button in the bottom. I could have cleaned up a bit better, but the walls are consistent, nice and thin. One of the things that I found is that uh, I wanted to make a drinking vessel. It's just slightly too big, even for my hand. So this diameter up here is just a bit too big. So I think that's why it really didn't make it in the house. Um, but, uh, cause that's three and three quarters. Uh, on the inside rim. So if I turn, turn this down to uh, maybe another uh, three quarters of an inch down to three inch, that would probably be fit better in the hand. It's just a bit too big. Um, but otherwise, it's a great size. It's uh, really quite a nice turning. Uh, I've got, I spilled something on it. I don't know what it is, but that'll probably sand out maybe. Um, so yeah, it's just uh, relegated out here. Um, so I've got a bit of, uh, of a tack cloth here to clean because a lot of the stuff is dusty. But yeah, that's number one. Um, number two, let's see, we got a big one here. I'll, I'll get it out just to go through it. So this was, and I'll go overhead to kind of get the size and scope of it. So uh, there's my hand. So it's a fairly big thing. It was meant to be a chip and dip platter. So a little place for a, a dip bowl and then, you know, uh, nacho chips or something all around it it's like that um it warped quite a bit so i had, had to flatten the bottom if we take a look you can see it's fat here and thin here i just held it on the disc sander just um sanded that flat um, because it uh, it had warped all over the place but it wasn't the best uh, turning it uh, really warped quite a bit as i was turning it. it got really thin on the edge um and stuff like that so it was really quite wet and uh, i should have finished it off but i didn't can see this is all ovaled out so um so this became an experiment place for uh some coloring um so and that's really what it's going to be for i've done some other stuff some wax stuff up here some different colors up here and so this is going to be sort of a, a palette to try uh different colors these are ink tense colors i do like the vibrancy of them uh, these were painted on probably over uh, probably two years ago um, and so they haven't faded. So I do like that. Of course, they've been stuck in a box. So really not a lot of room to fade. And I'm really realizing now I need, I need a place to put all this stuff as I take it off. So maybe I'll dump it over the table. 
Um, let's see. Um, yeah, just checking up on uh, on comments. So we've got a selection of wine goblets that didn't make it for one reason or another. There was a little vase there. So, um, so let's see what's wrong with some of these first. Uh, this one's not bad. Uh, didn't finish it. It's still got the nubbin on the bottom, so I haven't carved that off yet. Um, it's not quite as thin, as elegant as I would have liked the other ones. This one was nice and thin and elegant and worked well. What I didn't do right here is sand it enough. So this uh, finish where you dye it black and then use a, um, a liming wax or cream filler to fill a grain. Uh, if I just get some of the dust off there. It's actually not too bad. This one could probably go in the house um, and uh, and make it. Oh, I know. I see what happened. I broke the foot. That's what happened. So if I go overhead and let me zoom in, you can see the foot broke. So I've got a repair there. Um, so that's what happened. Must have fallen or something. So it's relegated to the shop. That's too bad. It's actually a, a good one. So let me widen that back out. Too much. And uh, the gold one, uh, this is the one I didn't sand enough. You can see sanding scratches up here that just didn't uh, didn't work and stuff. And uh, so uh, when you're doing this cream filler, uh, I, you need to sand it to at least 600, uh, preferably 1,000, 1,200 or something like that. Uh, just to polish the... Uh, the grain up and get rid of any sanding scratches so this i think was part of a demo so and i'm not a fan of the gold uh color so those go back in there and get shoved away a little miniature turning just uh, playing around with miniatures uh let's see what's next we have a couple of bigger turnings and they're too big for the camera so let me uh zoom that out a little bit if i can Bear with me as I touch the camera. There we go. And uh, let's see. Let me focus that a little bit. I don't have autofocus on this camera right at the moment. So oh, we're looking at the wrong camera. There we go. Looking at the wrong screen. So these are a couple of holoforms I did. God, these are probably at least 12 years. Uh, 2008, maybe. And... Uh, Still just haven't completed this one. Cracked quite a bit. Got the pith running right down through here. So what, that's why the tape's on there. Actually broke out a little bit in the rim. You can see there. So I think eventually I'll, I'll end up sawing that in half and making a two oval sort of dishes or something out of that one. So that's that one. Hello. And then, uh, uh, so these are mesquite. Uh, this was mesquite one. And the reason why 2009, I uh, took a class with Don Derry and used his uh, his um, a hollowing system for this. This one is mesquite as well. And I had a friend of mine uh, draw a sort of a buffalo Native Indian scene uh, on it. And the intent was to kind of carve it all out. Um, you know, these are flames down here. And I, I actually bleached this mesquite. I bleached it first and then, uh, then drew on it. So... Um, but just never finished it, never got to the point where I felt like it was wanting something to finish. Uh, just, I think was, uh, too much to do on one turning. So, um, sometimes you kind of get a little over ambitious and, uh, and stuff. So that's that one. So that, a uh, couple of hollow forms, um, you know, not finished yet. There's actually two more up on the shelf. I didn't bring down. Uh, there's actually another one up there. I, I started. Oh God, years and years and years ago, probably when I started turning. So let me get those out of the way. That's going to pile up quickly, folks, over there. So here's a bunch of stuff. Let's see. We'll get some of these guys out. So a bowl that cracked, uh, not complete waste. That might be good for uh, a half bowl or even just leave it that way and finish it. So I think this was actually done at a... Um, uh, an open shop in, in with the uh, with the club. So form is not bad. Thickness is pretty consistent. Um, it's obviously obviously quite oval now. 
Let's see there. You can see how oval that is. But uh, it was cherry, wet cherry when we turned it. So nice crack. And uh, anyway, that's in the in the bin. So here's a hollow sphere. It's hollow. So I don't know why that's not in the in the house. It's actually quite a nice sphere, but it's there. Uh, some crotch wood that I dyed and I just wasn't happy with the color. So it just went in the bin. Um, I don't know, a little sore bot, little things. Another sphere. Here's some of this finish I got on my little pot. Here's one of these attempts at an upside down top. A little vase. I had a nice skew catch on that one. So um, if we zoom in on that one, you can see the skew catch. So otherwise, nice little piece of wood. Uh, some leftover flags. Here there's a ring. I don't know what that's for. Oh, here's some interesting stuff. So I did a little hollow form. And then this is something I should finish off because these were a, a neat idea. Let me get the rest. Oh, this, before I do that, here's another bowl. This was supposed to be um, a bowl for my daughter's dog. At least I named it after that. This is a Cash's bowl. And if nobody can figure out why, uh, let me know. So there's a nice branch stem in there. I kind of highlighted, burned around it, and painted it or dyed it. And, uh, well, that's Cash's tongue. So that's Cash's bowl. So it's out here in the shop. Maybe one day my daughter will come and collect it. Actually, Shelly told me, uh, reminded me of this little story. And uh, we, uh, I have these boxes of turnings um, out here in the shop. And uh, it, uh, let me just go there, not there. All right, one second. Um. And our daughter comes home every once in a while and, and visits and stuff. And she came home from university uh, break one weekend. She had uh, gifts she needed for some college roommates or something like that. So she comes out and raids the boxes and looks through them and says, oh, that'll be nice. I'll take that bowl and put some potpourri in it and gift it away. So uh, these, uh, these do get used. We've actually got a very large rough turned uh, bowl that's, you know, it's meant for twice turning. I was going to turn it again. Well, the wife took it in the house and she's got decorator items in it and stuff. And it's sitting on our, somewhere in the house. I can't remember. It's on the f kitchen windowsill, I think. So anyway, so there, people take a look at your, your rejects and go, oh, those, those look great. And, and you may do that here. And I'm regretting a couple of these myself as I look at them. So, but uh, let's take a look. That was a knob for something. Uh, I'll, we'll get to that one in a minute. Um, take a look at these these were a uh, a bowl turning that was kind of put together like this and it was a little bowl if you could imagine all those kind of coming up around oh you can't even see that what am i doing um so if you can imagine these little pieces coming up around into a sort of a bowl form like that. Well, I just cut them apart, took an oak leaf pattern and started creating what were going to be earrings and what still may be earrings. So these were going to be for my daughter and maybe I'll have to make them. So I've got sort of three almost done. That's at least one set, maybe two sets of of sort of very light oak leaf type earrings. So that's what that was. So if you got these little things, you can kind of go through and carve them. I took a class with uh, Sammy Long and uh, turned uh, a uh, maple leaf pattern. I don't know what that is. Maple leaf pattern and did a lot of carving on it. It's a fairly well done piece. Um, it just needs some finish. And let's see if we can get the other angle on that, maybe a bit more. Well, let me go back and zoom in here. So, yeah, some good relief carving in there, just like that. And uh, it all looks pretty well. The uh, all the veining and stuff, and the texture and the leaves in a nice sort of bowl form. Nothing on the underside. It's really meant as a sculptural piece. So. Uh, it's just in the box. I don't, you know, don't ask me why. It just is. 
so that's box one. Let me catch up on comments or questions. Uh, Cindy says the earrings are a great idea. Yeah. So it's uh, just a, you know, small, you know, hollow form that uh, was fairly thin and just didn't uh, finish off um, the hollow form and said, oh, let's just cut it apart. So yeah, earrings. I'll finish those one day. This is the uh, the one day box. That's what it is. One day I'll finish it. Sorry, I'm just moving all these other parts and pieces. Off the table. Back into the box. And let's grab another box. Um, okay, we'll go through the apple or the milk crate. All right. Uh, here's a nice big blank. Let me, uh, see Chuck, how did you cut the earrings apart? Um, yeah, good question. How did I do that? Um, I might've used the bandsaw very carefully, uh, but I think I had a little fret saw, uh, that probably did the job better. Uh, I certainly may have cut the first piece off the bandsaw, I think, if I recall. And uh, uh, when I cut it off the bandsaw, it was pretty small. I thought, oh, it's not safe, Todd. So I took it to the bench and just used a fret saw, a uh, jeweler saw or something like that, and cut them apart. Um, I may have also used a power carving tool, just trim them apart. So, um, And then I just downloaded a leaf pattern from the internet and printed it and traced it on there and yeah just carved away so yeah um good question thanks chuck um all right we got a nice big blank here i started to create a nice little walnut bowl uh, but i don't know i just i just at the time of turning it, i just wasn't happy so uh that shape on the side is just not right this is probably 10 years old anyway so just wasn't wasn't happy. I, I think I oversized this area. So it may go on the lathe again and just I've got a, uh, a screw chuck and just shape that out maybe round it out or something and fix it. I got enough room to do that so and uh, just true up this. But yeah, once uh, I just stuck on the shelf. I just didn't want to finish it. Kind of get in that mood sometimes. Uh, this one is kind of interesting. Nice maple one. <laughs> I ended up uh, turning this uh, around. I put the screw chuck on the tenon side, of course, when I hollow this, it's going to have a hole through it. So that's why it's not, that's why it's here. You make those silly mistakes sometimes. I just mounted it wrong when I, uh, um, when I made it. So now it becomes sort of a, um, a test uh, piece is nice maple uh, for texturing and coloring. So I've experimented a few times on, on, uh, on the top here and We'll continue to do that, and that'll be what that is. So that's an experimental piece. Um, another bowl we've got here. Got this nice bead all the way around it and stuff. Nice little bowl shape. It turned out really quite nice. Nice little foot on it. Still can check it up. Shape on the outside is kind of funky, but I can round that out in here. This bead, I started covering, carving away because I wanted little little buttons all the way around. Well, that got tedious and I, I think I gave up. So um, it's now gone quite oval. So that is um, that kind of bowl. So that's that's kind of what that would be. So there's an idea of how to how to get those little knobs on the end. I'm not very, I wasn't very good at carving, still not um, to get those out and space those out. So interesting. Things you try. We've got a bunch of sort of half finished things here. This one's finished. That one's not finished. There's no one who got more of that uh, kind of stuff. All right, we'll take a look at a few of these. So we've got some really hard, I think this must be lignum vitae or something that's super, super hard wood. I'm not quite sure what it is, but um, it was too hard for me to turn 12 years ago. So it sat up on the shelf. I'll probably give that another shot. Might be a good, good dish. Uh, this is, uh, looks like a piece of sycamore, maybe ash. Um, and, uh, no, cedar elm, looks like cedar elm. And, uh, turned that shape and then thought, oh, well, 
let's see an experiment. So this is actually wax. So if we take a closer look overhead, this is a texture experiment piece now. So burning texture, burning style. Um, these are actually hollowed or pierced through and then filled with colored wax. So um, and that's really what I was trying to experiment with these encaustic waxes uh, years ago and still got some encaustic wax stuff. So uh, all these pierced holes filled with encaustic wax on the backside, they look like green polka dots. So, and then different color wax over on this side. It looks like red polka dots. So an experimental piece looking at uh, texture or piercings filled with wax. So that's what all that is. You can see I didn't finish a few of them right there. So yeah, an interesting technique, something I'll have to play more with. A uh, nice little spalted um, maple piece or something. I'm not quite sure that I dyed a certain color. Can't quite remember. I put a ebony ring in it and then I had some issues and decided, well, let's try some epoxy. And I thought that, well, I, I don't know, just didn't finish it. So it's relegated to the box. Another piece of whatever, I'm not sure, just didn't finish it. And then this nice little walnut thing, it's actually quite a nice little piece of walnut. And uh, it's a nice little form. It's nice and thin all the way down. It's really quite nice. Um, just not really pleased with how I finished the top. So um it just feels incomplete and i don't i don't have no no wiggle room here to do much with that so if you got ideas let me know um so some of these may be a, a good starting point or for somebody else on a collaboration or something who knows so let's uh okay anybody ever turn um purple heart it's really nasty to turn i just got carried away with experimenting on shape and just didn't work out. I'm just not happy with the rim and how it folds to the bowl. It's an undercut bowl somewhat. So, yeah, yeah, enough on that one. An ornament I haven't finished. A bowl I turned just a uh, not even a month ago, and uh, just ugly. Oh, a plate. This is a dirty plate. Very white, you can see it just is blown out in the camera. So um, this is an experiment in milk paint. So this is all white milk paint on there and was going to work through making some designs uh, on the plate. So that may still happen. Still a nice little plate and a uh, little dish for something. So yeah, that's a, that's a possible finish. Uh, some Hoslick training. Uh, I took a class of Michael Hosluck. Got those pieces. Um, here's a nice little ash with ash borer beetles. A uh, little turning. I think this was a demo I did. So that's done. Yeah, yeah, one of these triangle bowls. Yeah, uh, took a class. Um, I think this was uh, Craig Timmerman years ago. Um, went through that process. Interesting. Um, oh, this one's old. This one is uh, got to be 12 years old anyway. So that's not a bad little vase form. It's just not heavy enough at the bottom. It's too tippy. So needed more weight at the bottom. Uh, it's got a crack in it that I glued up, but otherwise nice and thin throughout, nice and hollow down in there. So uh, let's see. I am going through this stuff. Look at this piece of wood. That I believe is that spalted yellow birch that I uh, comments. She's saying I got the comments. Uh, Tony's asking something. Thank you, Shelly. Let's see. Uh, man, you need to finish that maple leaf bowl. Uh, really nice. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the carving one. Sure, Tony, I do. Uh, it is nice. It needs to go in the house eventually. But, uh, you know, I just, you get caught up in stuff. So uh, it just doesn't happen. Um, Cindy says, take your partly done pieces to the club and see what someone else does with it. Yeah, that's something else. That's a good, uh, sort of bring back, uh, um, a thing. 
say, hey, here's a, here's a piece. Somebody want to finish off? Uh, but this uh, this was this spalted yellow birch that I got from and Cindy will know the guy Howard and his wife up in the Rocky Mountain Symposium. Maybe the last name was Howard. I can't remember. Anyway, I got a, I got a log of it, and it's beautiful stuff to turn. Uh, but it makes uh, Steve Sinner sick, so I learned that uh, the hard way at uh, SWAT. That's another story for another time. Another sphere. Whoops. Uh, an unfinished box looks like uh, some Australian wood. I'm not quite sure. Maybe uh, maybe a rosewood of some sort. Here's here was a uh, an idea that I had. Uh, this is like a Saturn box, so it's got uh, a sphere bottom, and on the top here, it's got the bowl. And I had this rings turned out, and I was going to break them off at different heights, and you know, paint the the silver, and then fill it with black, and so it'd be the black stars and the starry night, uh, black sky, black midnight space sky, and stars twinkling. I just never finished the idea, but that's kind of the idea of that one neat idea here is a lampshade all right not really it was a bowl i just uh, went through the bottom actually i think i was making a a bowl and um decided let's make a lampshade so i've got the uh, sketchings on the outside where i want to kind of carve it and stuff and i was sizing this for one of those mini mini led bulbs but just never finished that one um another sphere can't see that. Let's go to that one. Um, here is a, uh, I think this is a Mark Singh Ledger type idea, a rockabye box. So that was what it's meant to be, a triple box. Uh, more of an experiment that I haven't done yet or, or completed the idea, but uh, uh, three holding points. Here's a little Christmas bell. Um, finial uh, trials. That's about in in there. Oh, a little spinning top. So yeah. Oh, and then, uh, another Bradford pear natural edge piece that just didn't quite turn out, but uh, there it is. All right. Oh, there's another spinning top. Lost piece. All right, away we go. Back into the box. Oh, surprised all those fit. All right. So is there any one particular piece that I've shown that anybody's kind of got, why isn't that finished or any piece that you like better or more than the other ones? So let me know. We can talk about it and see what there is to talk about. It's a nice little bowl that I just haven't finished off. Not a bad shape wise, if you look at it, so. It's got some promise, but just never got to it. So what does that say? Uh, 6, 27, 16. So that's that six, seven years old. So put that one over there. Uh, this box is kind of uh, full of a lot of jam chucks and stuff. So a lot of, um, well, waste blocks and, and other things like that. So we'll just quickly go through some of these. So this is actually from uh, Craig Timmerman's class or his uh, toroid vase. That's a jam chuck, so his vase kind of fits on there. And uh, you can finish off the bottom. Um, so it's a bit of a jam chuck. So uh, these kind of things this is actually a two-part piece. I glued something in there. So um, another jam chuck for something. Um, a, another piece of wood or maybe it's a, a box. I'm not quite sure. Oh, I went through this idea of doing tubes. And so I made a bunch of tubes that kind of fit together and was going to make something out of the tubes. So so that that was a good practice on fitting tenons and, and, and uh, recesses. And these have all warped, so they don't quite fit but one way. 
and that one comes out. Will that one fit in there? No, it won't. So, yeah, now they've kind of gone pear shaped. Interesting idea. This is a blank uh, curly maple uh, laminated on both sides of a mahogany. So, this is outlined for a, a bracelet. So, I think a bracelet's kind of a few sizes, but what is this? I think two in five eighths or something like that is about the standard size of a bracelet. And, uh, maybe Cindy uh, or Shelly can tell me different. But so that I had a few of those. I had a few um, ebony and yellow heart uh, pieces. And these are left over from the, uh, um, I've got three sort of cantilevered, uh, you know, TV tray tables, for lack of a better word, in the house that I made out of, um, you know, rosewood, burl, and um, uh, Peruvian walnut. And inlaid in there is a strip of um, uh, ebony and yellow heart. And these are leftover strips from that. Um, so I was making little, do I have it still here? I had a, um, no, don't have it. Um, uh, making little sort of, what do you call them? Brooches or uh, necklace hanging things. Um, put these on sort of a, a one of those joiner chucks yeah, that uh, Ruth Nile sells. And you can make some nice uh, jewelry out of these, uh, these pieces. So laminated pieces, um, great for contrast and stuff for jewelry. Um, so don't throw those scraps away because someday they'll come back and you will know what they mean or what to do with them. Okay, so... Ah, Roger Howard. Thank you. That was a gentleman that sold the uh, the wood at uh, Rocky Mountain Symposium. And um, hopefully that's coming back in 2023 from what Cindy is uh, telling me. So I don't know if uh, Roger is and his wife, I forget his wife's name, Cindy will know, um, will be there. But uh, they have wood up in the outback of Minnesota, I think. Uh, it's really nice stuff. So um, yeah, it'd be great to get up there again. Let's see. Uh, Scott says, I think most of us have a box like that. Yeah, I've got four boxes like this. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, continue on for a little bit longer. I uh, want to get to some of your questions and, and comments. So Chris says, hey, good to have you here, Chris, by the way. Chris is another club member from last night. Uh, the wallet vase may look good with some embellishment on the top rim. Yeah, it may. And that's uh, that's what I kind of wanted to do with it. But it's, uh, it's at that point where it's a little thin. Um, to get that done so you can see that is uh is almost knife edge right there so but maybe maybe just a uh you know maybe if we turn it upside down and we think about it maybe something else comes to our mind so or sideways or cut it in half um or cut the top off or do something with it i'm not quite sure so that's where i'm stuck right i'm stuck with what goes next so Good, good thought though. Um, if, if, if you want to try something with it, Chris, let me know and, uh, I'll bring it next time. Tony says, I really like the maple leaf bowl and the wallet hollow form. Don't understand where that one's not. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I get it. I get it. I know. Uh, it's just, everybody has their own sort of thoughts of what they like, uh, their own work and what they don't. And it takes another person to look at it and say, that looks cool. So I'll rethink some of this. Is this and maybe, this is, this is, uh, um, this is helpful, uh, because, um, you kind of get a different person's perspective and that's, what's great about having a spouse or, or a partner or something like that, to, or somebody you can talk to and say, have them look at it and see what they think of, of it. And maybe your perception is, is, um, prejudiced because, you know, you turned it and you didn't like the process. We've got a, we've got a painting in, uh, in the, uh, right by the front door of our house that our daughter painted in high school. She had this uh, assignment to do six art um, paintings, oil colors. I'm not quite sure. And uh, she got, you know, on the day of handing in the assignment and she only had five and she's going, well, I thought I had six. And so uh, in 30 minutes, she painted this one painting. It's quite an abstract in, uh, sort of painting. Um, but she hated it because of the process, because of the stress she felt and stuff like that. 
but it's the most wonderful painting and it's uh, we just love it and so every time she come home comes home she kind of goes why do you still have that up and you're hanging it wrong and so we have a hanging vertical in in uh, you know portrait and it's supposed to go landscape but it fits in our hallway portrait so um so that's where it hangs so every time she sees it she cringes and that's where somebody else's perspective changes right so um so it's good good point good point so uh let's see um chuck uh, says i have a box of failed attempts at triangle boxes twisted triangle boxes and finials i'm still adding to it excellent um scott says i have a box full of unfinished ornaments yeah excellent uh let's see Let's see. Let's see. Chris says, I cut it and maybe a nice size cup or glass. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's a possibility for this guy cutting it. That might be the right. That's, you know. All right. See, somebody's got me thinking because I had this, uh, had this other original one. So where did it go? Bear with me a second as I dig through and find that, that one. Oh, it's in this box. That's why I can't find it in that box. So I uh, um, dug this one out again. I told you that this one's just a bit big, and this one might be about the right size for the hand because see, you can get my my fingers are just barely getting around this this one. So, but they're getting quite nicely around this one. So this is probably the right size of a cup or a glass. So, yeah, maybe. Uh, Maybe I need to jam chuck it and trim that off and finish the rim. It's a good idea. All right. Convinced me. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Tony says, we are all our own worst critics. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, oh, should we read Shelly's comment? So... <laughs> He is really picky on his own work. I have to tell him frequently it looks good, but he always finds something wrong with his pieces. And and uh, uh, I've got to uh, I've got to say the same holds for uh, the other way around. So Shelley will tell me when something doesn't look right. So it's good to have that critical eye, a different perspective, a different point of view uh, to kind of you know keep you sane. Oops, put that up. So. Uh, yeah, let's carry on. So in this box here, mostly jam chucks, uh, dowel for something, another piece of jam chuck wood, another little chunk of nice wood there. I don't know. Making rings. I was thinking about uh, this whole pipe process. Um, here's some templates. So uh, eight inch square bowl template, one and three quarter deep. Um, six inch square bowl template, one inch deep. So these were actually meant to uh, work with some slumped glass. So um, we have a kiln in, in the shop here. So we got to do something with it. I don't know what the heck that is. Uh, another, another bracelet uh, there. Um, some more uh, jewelry parts. And then just a bunch of knickknacky pieces, chunks of wood, little, I don't know what these are. These came, I don't know what those are. I have no idea. Just little bits of wood that you just don't know what you're going to use for. So that's mostly what this is. Little small jam chucks and stuff and failed experiments and some jewelry parts. These I should actually put in the uh, the other box with the, the eccentric chuck. All right, so this is just a little dusty. In here, we have a few things. We have another uh, plate. This screw hole goes right through. So that's uh, good for experimenting. Nice piece of curly maple though. Um, for experimenting on different finishes, different techniques. Here's a box where I made uh, a piston box where I made the lid rounded. Uh, very difficult to open. So uh, we don't do that. That's why it's in here, it's failed. What's down in there? Oh, hang on. Oh, okay. I thought it was a, a nest of spider eggs because it was all white down in there. I was kind of freaking out. So, so it's a, it's a, a piece of uh, uh, paper towel 
that was used as a jam chuck. So, boy, talk about freaking me out. We get uh, we get spiders around here, and they make little these little white sort of cotton ball looking things. I thought that's what that was. But anyway, so that's a piston box that failed. Uh, ooh, look at that. There's a box. Let's see. Does that match? Someone matchy matchy. Yeah, not bad. So there's a box that's ready to be finished. Just haven't done that yet. Another part of the pipe. Uh, this I'll talk about in a second. Oh, here's the purple heart. The other one wasn't purple heart. It was um, the Cody maybe. But here's the purple heart piece. It just, ugh. Don't like turning that stuff. Here is do tailstock handle first, alanlacer.com. Oh, this was a, uh, this was a class with Alan Lacer. So we were making those um, door stops, wedges. So there's a line across here. So we, um, we did some pommel cuts and uh, you cut it in half there and you got a door wedge. Anyway, um, here's half of a, uh, of a split column that I did. I actually cut this in the bandsaw. I cut fairly well. But this was actually a, a, uh, a base mount. We cut this off. We'll sand it. So I've got the other half of this in there holding up some spheres on vinyls. Cindy's seen that piece. So it's uh, three spheres. So just a, a, a turning that's split in half. I got a spurtle that uh, my wife didn't like, so it's out here. It had tape on it for a sanding. And uh, yeah, another sanding jig of some sort. And then little finials, little pieces. This guy, this is the last, last of the pieces. So this is a turning that is. Um, done half of it's done the other half is not so you can see how this came off the lathe just kind of like this and i've actually numbered them 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 oh there's 13 14 so these go around the other side so it was a 24 segment um split and so this is half this is uh, its brother or its uh, sister however you want to genderize it uh, is in the house and it's critter dom he's sitting on our buffet um, and so this was uh, turned as a full donut and then left this center part and then sliced on a bandsaw into 24 segments and then each segment I drilled out I mounted in uh, do you, are you bringing Critter? Yes. All right. I should bring in Critter. Thank you, sweetie. I wasn't thinking I was going to do this one, but there's his stand, and he's going to be better shot off to the side here. So there is Critter. So this guy is, you know, I just can turn up the exposure just a little bit. I think that's as far as I can go. Um, he's got, I'm put some more light on him. He's got uh, 12 segments in him. One, two, three. Each of these legs represents a segment. Each of those legs is this piece here. So uh, it's uh, hollowed and then the legs are carved to a spike. So the legs are integral to the, uh, to the turning. And then uh, if I uh, just hold that, leave that there, lift them off, and we open them up, and there's the inside. So it's all hollow all the way down to his tail. His head is hollow, got little eyes, and so that is little my little critter. And I made this little stand for him. That there we go. Kind of helps him stand up. So this is the, uh, this is Critter's brother. So, or sister. So I just haven't put them together yet. Or it could be something else completely different. Oops. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, that is, uh, is uh, one of those 
freaky ideas you just kind of get. And I kind of oh, I thought, well, let's let's do this part of it over here, and then let's do this part of it over here. So maybe another s picture of his underside, his curvature, his painting, his carving, all that stuff, and his eyes. See his eyes there. And then his, his guts in there. Yeah, so I have a freaky mind sometimes. Let's see. Rest, my little fella. There we go. That's That's what's in my boxes. So hopefully... That kind of gives you an idea of what, uh, you know, what a few years of turning kind of does for you. Let's see. Um, and Shelly says, oh, yeah, it looks bad. I say, no, go back to the shop. You go. <laughs> yeah, she does. She says, do it again. Uh, Cindy, uh, little bits of wood and jam trucks. That's my whole shop. Yep. So, yeah, they, they make, uh, may come in useful sometimes, so. Oh, she's taking Critter back. Good idea. Yeah. Thank you, sweetie. Yeah. Uh, let me get to... A little drinky boo. Um, so at some point, you know, we'll make something out of those guys. But that was done. Oh, here's the... Uh, Here's the template, by the way. Um, simple as that. Just a little cardboard template and you lay out and mark your lines of where you're gonna, so that way they're consistent and stuff. So uh, I'm just marked on the one or the two of them. So, but yeah, keep that, keep templates and stuff like that. And uh, Keep your parts to make part two, part three, whatever it may be. Uh, oh, let's see. Where is... I haven't put this up. That one? That one? Yeah. Scott Hampton's comment about Grace. Oh. Tell him the story about when you went to a wood turning meeting and his head blew off. And I was at the hospital myself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, let's see. Scott says one of these days, Critter will walk across the floor and when he's least expecting. So, yeah. Here, you know, Shelly was reminding me of a story. I He was set up in the house. He was done for about a year, anyway, maybe just about a year. And, um, been in the house for the year and, and I was off out somewhere, probably at a club meeting and, uh, we're, uh, uh Shelly's in the house and she hears this big pop noise and this rattle, you know, of wood falling and stuff like that. And, uh, here it was, um, the seasonal temperatures, seasonal movement of the wood and critter dom popped his head off. And, um, and, uh, that the head landed and actually broke one of the eyes. So I had to redo the eye. And, um, uh, it just freaked her out. It was like Critter Dom was alive. Um, so, um, yeah, just, uh, what I did after, when I repaired the eye, I drilled some holes in the head all the way through, uh, to relieve that pressure difference. Uh, cause I don't know if it was pressure, uh, inside and outside the, the wood that just made it pop. Um, it hasn't done it yet again. I don't think maybe I've done it once. I'm not quite sure. So. One of the things about boxes with the lid kind of hanging down, um, it may, may, may come loose and pop off. So yeah, least expected that, that, that's one scared her out. So, uh, put an ebony stem on that rounded box lid. Oh yeah. 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 The, uh, the piston box that didn't work. Do I have room? I think I do. Yeah. So there's definitely room to drill that. So I could chuck that up, put a, uh, put a finial on it. That's a good, that's a good idea, Tony. 
So it is a good little uh, piston box. Not a great fit around the lid. I'd have to chuck out the whole thing and true up the lid. Um, I don't know if I didn't undercut that. I didn't undercut this one. Yep. So I'd have to true that up. Not a problem to do. I still got the chucking point and can jam fit and tape that um, or put pressure on there and fix that. So that's definitely doable. All right. I'll put that aside. You've convinced me. It's not in the box anymore. Um, uh oh. We've got spam. Block user. All right. I think that took it away. An error occurred. Try refreshing the page. Okay, let me refresh. Uh oh, do I want to do that? I'm back. Is it still on there? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'm glad you got rid of it. I, I uh, what's this? JPN Company just came in. That could have reminded me of how of the antique Japanese articulated metal bugs and sculptures. Cool stuff. All right, cool. Um, thank you. Uh, I took it away too. Thank you, Cindy. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, there is. A, I, I should have practiced that again. I kind of we had this happen a month or two ago and figured out how to get rid of it. So thank you for the help. Um, but that's, uh, that's kind of, uh, it. Um, I didn't have anything else to show. If you guys have anything, well, there is one more. Can I reach it? I can't reach it. It's way up high out of the way. I'm at my hour anyway. We'll have to save that for another day. Um, be sure to check out, uh, Lyle's, um, um uh, demo on wednesday and uh check out cindy's live stream thursday and her um uh, lidded uh container um with the vessel and collar on saturday so looking forward to those and uh hope you all can join us and uh let me get back to sorry about it, flipping through there um I was looking for some, sorry, lost my way a little bit. Uh, thanks for joining today. And uh, hopefully there is some uh, inspiration, some questions in your mind. And uh, I certainly have some, some new thoughts on a few things. So I um, appreciate you all joining. And um, yeah, David, thank you. This was really fun for me too. Um, I should get my, have my new camera coming shortly. So we'll be back set up for a, a full camera view and stuff like that. So, uh, for the next time. So, uh, I, uh, I will, uh, be back in two weeks and, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but if you got ideas, let me know and, uh, we'll, uh, we'll figure it out together. So, um, but for now I'm Todd Rains, the wood turning tool store and, uh, come and join me every second Friday and, uh, we'll do, uh, hopefully some little bit of turning next time and we'll figure something out. Um, and, uh, until then I want you all to have a great safe weekend, uh, go create something in the shop, go look in those shelves and pull something down that you haven't looked at in a while and, um, see what you can do with it or give it to a friend and see what they can do with it. So until then, uh, take care everybody and, uh, so long.